okay welcome to the final part of this uh, how to establish doctrine uh, one of them is prayer and we can see King David um, praying many times establish your servant um, God saying he's going to establish his covenant um, with people who seek him uh, seek his face do his will and uh, we even hear about God having or establishing a covenant in Jeremiah 33 20 with uh, the day and the night uh, we never hear of God um, establishing a covenant with like uh, Saturn or the Sun in fact we see God condemning the very fact that the the pagans have um, pagan covenants with the, the luminaries in Jeremiah 8 verse 2 <coughs> um, and so it's, it's no wise um, it's the wisdom of the world to observe the things of the world to say that uh, you know God created Saturn's day in order to worship him when he's nothing to do with the planet Saturn he's got nothing to do with Sun's day or Moon's day okay he created these luminaries um, as uh, far as the night separates the day and uh, he, you know he appointed the moon to rule over the night and the sun to rule over the day and uh, what we have there is the luminaries themselves establishing a calendar um, just people just can't work that out because um, their minds haven't been renewed you know this uh, basic um, Torah wisdom has not been shown to them and uh, what you really have to pray first of all is that God smashes every idol in your life you have to be sincere about it and you have to ask the Lord um, to establish um, his commands in your life you actually have to ask God to do that in order for him to do that and he will show you um, his truth his covenant um, which stands forever um, throughout all ages and of course it's the the terms of the covenants which um, the laws change but uh, never the Ten Commandments never the actual core of um, all the covenants that God established through his servants uh, right up until Yeshua and um, there indeed will be no other covenants and that God will establish Yeshua as the fulfillment, fulfillment of all the covenants and uh, the perfection of them all um, you know the son of God offering himself on the cross is the final um, carnal sacrifice and uh, in the future in Ezekiel uh, it does talk about um, the Cohen being um, resurrected again King David over Israel and so on but uh, free will offerings um, are different from you know atonement or sin offerings um, they may well do that during the Sabbath millennium um, the nations may come up and most importantly we see it in Zechariah 14 Isaiah and so on we see the nations coming up just to worship the king um, on his holy days on his appointed feast times and uh, that knowledge is only available to those who are born again it's just as simple as that and um, the Lord um, um, will not um, show you these things as long as you have covenants established with um, other um, gods lesser gods planets um, Saturn itself you have to actually diminish smash um, these demonic covenants <clears throat> we see many um, of course uh, deliverance teachers online these days uh, on on YouTube never actually heard uh, anyone uh, suggest that they should be smashing any covenants that their forefathers have had with the Sun moon and stars because um, that generation mentioned in um, Jeremiah 8 are very much likened to the Illuminati who practice these things and who cause the earth, the whole world to follow after um, their idols. Um, people just don't realize how deeply this goes. The Illuminati are in full control um, of the calendar system and as long as you um, continue in the status quo and you don't renew your mind according to the um, Holy Spirit you know the coming of the Holy Spirit you know, you're going to stay in error if you don't pray about this you must take all this to prayer to establish the Lord's doctrine and just as we see also um, here 
even though I didn't get to see uh, this show in Central Pier with regards to 9-11 uh, the different theories behind what actually happened and who was responsible for it you know I did meet a very nice woman in Blackpool who was trying to explain all that to me but I'm sure she knew what she was talking about and a lot of people say the Rothschilds are behind all that stuff and yeah they may, may be part of it but uh, you know how it was done is another story and well certainly um, there's a lot of eyewitnesses and experts that have um, put cases forward regarding 9-11 and uh, uh, not much success yet so it's something that the Lord showed me that would happen and would lead to Armageddon you know so uh, I guess some things are just meant to happen um, even though um, having the gift of prophecy yes we definitely have to warn God's people about repenting and uh, that uh, to stop these disasters from happening but as I mentioned before uh, the Lord said that these disasters happen due to sin um, in the world you know um, referring back to the time that the second temple was destroyed and uh, you know we can't re rejoice when when God's people are in sin or in error this is why one of the reasons why I make these videos so that the Jewish people and so that uh, Ephraim and the church or whoever may be um, a so-called biblical um, you know student might um, put these things into practice and seek the Lord you know I spoke briefly about why I think the flat earth is uh, a false conspiracy because it hides um, a lot of uh, bases which have been uh, said to have been discovered in the South Pole um, you know it covers over the fact that there is a South Pole and it actually uh, destroys even all the, the four laws of physics to do with uh, you know how the planets move and indeed how the actual tides move as well as well as gravity you know if you're saying that the four laws of you know electromagnetic um, kinetic energy gravity and so on that Einstein was speaking about you know if you call Einstein an idiot um, I don't really rate your intelligence that much he may have been wrong in some things there may have been more uh, better more godly men um, with a better grasp of um, the Lord's creation and the Word of God but I really do think that Einstein said a lot of um, very profound things and things which uh, are biblical and he even said um, some very good things about uh, Yeshua uh, the Messiah him being of course Jewish and uh, he even said that he spent a year trying to be um, observing the Jewish religion and uh, he just ended up uh, studying Yeshua. You know, a lot of people don't realize that about Einstein. Um, he could well have been a, a so-called messianic Jew, and uh, you know, of course, he was given a lot of um, uh, theories which just flashed up in his mind. And um, of course, but uh, establishing doctrine, you know, biblical doctrine is, is, is what this is about, and even Einstein. Um, couldn't really work out uh, the what the lunar or the solely lunar Sabbath actually was, or um, what I refer to as the Reformed Hebrew calendar of of Jeshurun, uh, which is the name of my uh, movement or ministry, it has been for um, almost ten years now um, since I visited um, India and Africa, and so I know that Jeshurun is very much uh, it's not a racial thing you know that there is Israelites right spread through all the earth um, so you know if you want to join Jeshuron let me know um, it's not a racialist movement uh, very much for the actual teaching of the Torah the scriptures and um, you know no one's really proven anything wrong um, about the teachings that, that, that we have at Jeshuron no one's actually challenged us in anything and if they have you know, I, th I think that um, we could give a very, very good account um, through using factual information. Um, uh, you know, obviously, to show that God's word is is true, and that's that's what we should be about as Christians, not to belittle each other or, um, you know, to fight against each other, but certainly to, you know, let all men be liars and let God be true.
<laughs> Amen, at the end of the day. So yes, um, it does take time to study God's Word and pray about it and then put it into effect. And um, there'll of course be little details that you, you might have to um, clear up in your understanding along the way. Of course, uh, Isaiah 11, first couple of verses talk about the seven spirits of God, or what you might call the seven dimensions of the Holy Spirit. Um, which include understanding, knowledge, uh, fear of the Lord, might, um, counsel, and so on. All these are very, very vital uh, in a Christian's walk. Um, you know, it's impossible to escape any of, of these dimensions if you're born again. Especially when a person becomes born again, they receive the, the fear of the Lord. A lot of people are very fearful in the world. Uh, they have many enemies, many things to overcome afraid of many different things in the world but if you fear God that is the beginning of wisdom and that's when you begin to start um, understanding things and um, developing that understanding through prayer and giving your life to the Lord and dedicating your life to God it's very very important so indeed as you gave your life to the Lord in faith and asked him into your life to be your Lord and Saviour um, we must continue in the faith and uh, allow the Lord to establish his kingdom in our lives um, and in doing so um, he's going to give you revelation about his commandments um, and it's just truly astounding to understand that um, the church is very much deviated as we can read in the seven churches of Asia Minor in the book of Revelations chapter uh, first couple of chapters there and uh, we can see only that two of these churches are walking um, uh, with the Lord in, in any close manner. The rest of them have strayed. Um, some of them are strayed from the teachings of the commandments. Some of them are strayed from the Lord himself. Um, some of them have um, men's doctrine in them, exalting men uh, above the Lord's commands and so on because you know we're commanded to love one another, we're commanded to um, exalt the less esteemed um, many there's actually more commands that Yeshua gave in the New Testament than than are mentioned in the book of Leviticus. A lot of people aren't aware of that. And um, the Lord gave a lot of commands in the New Testament which are not being adhered to in the New Covenant. And so, you know, if you don't have any respect for the Old Covenant, then certainly um, just see how the churches are just dead, completely disregarding Yeshua's words, Jesus Christ's words, and His teachings and His commandments which he spoke to his disciples. You know, how many um, churches um, do feet washing? How many churches um, has the pastor in uh, sweeping um, the, the the altar, <laughs> you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a Saturn's day morning, you know, according to their own understanding of, of God's um, holy days? And so you can't escape that. You know, you can call me a legalist, and yet there's more legalism in the churches that, that than, than there ever is in establishing the Lord's commandments through grace by faith and it's all through grace by faith and it's just not that way in the church it's very very dogmatic it's very very legalistic and they just uh, they won't entertain anyone that um, says anything else other than what they teach and that's that's uh, men's teachings that's legalism again so we, we need to get back to prayer we need to get back to the word of God and uh, allowing the blood of the Lamb to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Very, very important um, that we com completely do that right through our entire um, life, our social life, our economic life, our family life. Allow the Lord to do that for you, and I can guarantee um, you'll see His blessing upon you. Thanks for listening. May the Lord uh, bless you. Shalom.